Hi. <laughs> the world is changing. It's changing really fast. In fact, it's driven to a great extent by technology, and it's driven by concepts that help us build technology faster and better. And to counter that, we have concepts and technology that help us, help us cope with technology we've already built. So what are we supposed to do with all this? In a world full of rapid change, things are going on, things are moving very fast, we need to be agile. That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Something called the Agile Business Mindset. We're going to talk about its effect on culture. And perhaps most importantly, how we can make it work for us. So it actually turns out that industry surveys show that two-thirds of technology projects have failed. Two-thirds. And as recently as last year, when they redid this survey, 50% were still failing. Now imagine that. You know when you set out to do something that one out of the two things you're going to try to do is doomed. That's pretty rough. But it also makes some sort of instinctive sense. It's intuitive to us to know that if we're going to try to do something new, to push a technical boundary, to do something that's never been done before, we have a real risk of failure. It's hard. It's harder than just doing something that's already been done. So how do you handle that? Well, it turns out that you try to build the right thing. You try to do, come up with different methods to help you do the right, uh, build the right thing. But it turns out that building the right thing is also really hard. Half the time or more, it turns out that by the time you're done building what you set out to build, what, you, what you're building is no longer relevant. 70% of features in software aren't used. That's like building a 10-room house and having the people you built it for saying, we only needed three and we're never going to set foot in the other seven rooms. That's a bit of an absurd thing to have happen, but it happens all the time. That's very challenging to deal with. Turns out that Agile has been successful. Those using Agile methodologies get product to a market 30% faster. Sounds great. But what is Agile really? Well, here I am with my first Agile mentor. That's Kofi the Lemur out of Willowbank uh, Nature Preserve in Christchurch. She's pretty, pretty nimble, pretty quick. You know, uses all of her limbs and a tail, beautiful balance. She is Agile. So agility is the ability to move quickly and easily or to think and understand quickly. Now, maybe it's because my family is from India. Whenever I think of agility, I think of monkeys. They're cheeky. They leap from branch to ground to another branch. You've probably seen these great videos of, of monkeys in trees pulling cheetahs' tails and then running back up the tree. That's pretty agile. That's, pretty, that, that's taking some risk, right? That's your primary predator, and, and you're literally pulling the guy's tail. So monkeys are agile. How can businesses be more agile? Well, it turns out about 30 years ago, a group of technology developers got together uh, was at what was called the Snowbird Conference. And they had been developing ideas independently of each other. And some of these ideas were working, some of them were having problems, but they all shared the common problem that things were failing, projects weren't getting done, or even if they were get, getting done, by the time they were done, it turns out nobody cared. Whoops. So they came up with what's called the Agile Manifesto, and there are four major values. They chose to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. A usable product over paperwork. Now, how many of you work in jobs where you fill out too much paperwork and you feel you don't get enough done? That's challenging. So we want to, we want to value the product over the paperwork. They want to value collaboration over things like contracts. The words are used interchangeably in some places, but they're really very different things. Collaboration is about working together. Contract is a very tight type of interface. And they want it to be responsive to change rather than obsessed with sticking to a plan. One of my favorite quotes uh, about how to do that comes from Patton, 
A good plan executed violently today is better than a perfect plan next week. So it turns out that there are different ways to do Agile, but the fundamental concepts are adhering to those values and then also working to chop up work into smaller pieces, each of which can be delivered and has some significant value to whoever you're delivering it to. So this is a concept of eating an elephant a piece at a time. It turns out we actually often in, in projects try to eat the elephant one whole leg at a time and then the trunk. Those pieces are too big. We can't get things done. It's better to chop it up. So Professor Blaise Reich at the University uh, at Vancouver in Canada, she works on quantifying and understanding what Agile actually does for business. Well, it turns out more Agile practices result in better stakeholder success, teams doing better, a culture of support, better documentation, clarity in what work needs to be done. And the feedback led to budget and time success. So it turns out maybe there is actual value in monkeying around at work, even though they tell us not to. But when you think about how Agile has affected business, you, you, clearly there have been benefits. But what about its effects on our culture? Agile is teaching businesses and therefore people who work at businesses and who are influenced by businesses to chop things up tighter and tighter. We can do more in, in smaller amounts of time. We can do more in smaller amounts of space. So is this an actual culture change towards people? We hope so. But is our culture and society better for it? Are we becoming more frantic? Are we choosing to give up doing things rigorously? Are we choosing to give up on projects and throwing them away too early in the name of agility? Corporations, when, you, when they scale this up, will hire and fire a thousand people all in a few months span. That's pretty rough on people. Is that a benefit to our culture and our society? And is Agile confined to technology? It turns out it's starting to leak, like any good idea, and a lot of bad ones too. Um, it's leaking out of technology into our general culture. People are using it in their homes. They're using it to manage a wedding. They're using it to manage their family life and interactions with multiple children. Turns out people are also using it at, in schools with PTAs. The Boy Scouts are using it, although perhaps the Boy Scouts could teach the rest of us how to be agile, given the way they organize their troops and their teams. So it's not confined just to technology, but where are we finding the benefits in those places? How do we make it work for us? Well, it's in particular, how do we make it work in New Zealand? We've got Captain Kiwi here. He's ready to go, he's agile. He's got a shield, he's got beer on his belt just in case it's party time. He's got, enough, he's got his boots on, he's ready to go in the mud, in the rain, doesn't matter. He's agile. He's taken agility into himself. He's, he's, like, a, he's like some sort of special ready to go, you know, very agile monkey. So clearly agile applies outside of technology, but what are we going to do with it? As normal people, as people with small businesses, as people who have children, as people who have schools. Well, there are things we can do. When you talk about industry, they talk about cost, budget, time. Those are impersonal things. That's not, that's not how you and I in our daily lives outside of work can be agile. But we can do certain things. We can respond to demand quickly, like the agile bakery that stopped bringing everybody in at 2 a.m., started baking later, and said, we're gonna start with a basic croissant and then build fancy things on top of that. But we can sell our basic product right away. Or the Agile Studio that said, we're gonna build basic videos, and then if people want more, we can add more interesting things, but we can go directly. We can teach collaboration to youth. 
In California, project-based learning is becoming much more accepted as a new method of teaching children how to do work in the future and how to learn. So what they're doing is actually democratizing leadership within students and student groups by using agile methodologies. What it does is it makes sure that the shy, quiet children get their ideas heard and get a chance to demonstrate their knowledge alongside as the loud ones. We can use it to be more efficient. Small construction companies are learning to commoditize portions of housing and other buildings that can be delivered and plugged in, basically, rather than choosing to build layer by layer. It's a very different way of doing things, but that agility is allowing them to stop when it's the right time and stop quickly with less resources expended. We can build the right thing. A lot of time in architectural and marketing design, people are given a task and they go off, spend a bunch of money, do a lot of time, and, buy, and when they come back to the customer, they've done the wrong thing. Sorry, that's not what we were interested in. Why didn't you talk to us? Well, it turns out, if they had had a, with tighter feedback from the customer, you can build the right thing every time. And you can use it to reduce risk. When you're doing things for the first time, you don't know if you can do them. Sometimes there are fundamental roadblocks that you have to deal with. By doing things in smaller steps and checking back repeatedly, and hopefully each of those steps is actually something you can test, you can quickly expose if there is a block that simply can't be overcome. And we can be more accountable to each other. By using agile methodologies, what you do is you find a way in our society to hold each other more accountable because you're not accountable just to some boss who's telling you to do something. You're accountable to your peers. It's a totally different way of looking at how we do things, but as a society, it's actually a much more community-based way. Now, a friend of mine who is in the Marines always talks about improvising, adapting, and overcoming. So how do we use agility in that context? Well, there's nothing more agile than, the co than bringing together improv improvisation, adaptation to overcome obstacles. So to improvise, can we chop up our car restoration into smaller, more manageable pieces? Can we use it to help our retirement planning? Can we use it to help in our social lives? And then also we need to adapt to Agile. So what that means is adopting Agile into our own lives. For example, one way I use continuous feedback a lot is in my marriage. My wife makes sure that I get a lot of continuous feedback. That, that's number one. Um, but you can also use it to chop up things into smaller blocks. You know, we don't have to clean the whole house at once. We can clean parts of the house. There's a lot of different ways to bring it into your home. And finally, we can use it to overcome by integrating all these things, by being more community-based, by being more democratized in the way we accept and use leadership, by overcoming our, our inagility and becoming agile, we can actually overcome a lot of obstacles in our lives, in our endeavors, not just in business, but also in our personal lives. In the end, I come back to thinking about my beautiful little agile monkey. It's quick, it's nimble, it jumps around, and, but it does it with a purpose. It's not incoherent, it's graceful, it's smooth. They have communities that interact with each other and leadership passes as necessary. So we have to fundamentally let out our inner monkey. Thank you for your attention.